What's the most creative insult you've ever heard? Oh, with a title like that, you know it's going to be good. I'm ready, are you? Story one. My wife says that I have the fashion sense of a colorblind pimp. <laughs> Not saying she's wrong, though. I heard this one at work. Having Bob on your team is like having two good workers quit. Oh, that second one is gold. Poor Bob, he's trying his best. I'm not sure we know that. Let's unpack it to a line. Here's what I've been seeing. So we got Bob. He's a classic, come in 18 minutes early so he can put his items down and go get his coffee. There's a 37% chance he doesn't make it to his, jest, to his desk before spilling on himself. Linda will definitely come ask him if he likes the tomatoes from her garden that she gave him yesterday. Bob hates tomatoes. He said they were the juiciest he's ever had. Thanks, Linda. Greg is headed over soon to tell Bob he's swamped and needs a hand. Greg wants to go golfing and claim he's with a client so he can expense it. Bob is busy today, but takes Greg's project anyway. Bob royally messes up Greg's project and misses his own deadlines while taking on Greg's work. Not looking good for Bob today. Bam. Susan and Kathy are talking in the lunchroom at 10.30 a.m. Susan thinks she's funny by saying, having Bob on your team is like losing two good employees. Spoiler alert, Pete was grabbing water and overheard. Honestly, Pete just isn't taking anyone's guff anymore, and his brother outed him at the family Easter brunch last week. Pete silently walks back to his desk and resigns the Bob project to Susan. It's already missed the deadline when she realizes it's hers. Curse you, Susan. You've missed deadlines for the last time here. Get the hell out. Okay, maybe Bob isn't great, but he's no Susan. What have you heard? Dude, I will stay tuned throughout all of your commercials to get to part two, Susan's epic meltdown. Whoa. Thanks for breaking down the silos. Let me tell you what I've heard. You may find that there's some actionable potential for synergy here. Let's take it this off. Let's take this offline. There's no question that Bob has too much on his plate. He doesn't say no, and as a result, he's in over his head. I didn't realize how many people were throwing him under the bus. What you might not have heard is that Bob may have other motivations than spinelessness or incompetence. Not that he is competent. He's, well, he's Bob. But what doesn't get aired is that Bob is a vested employee from before the merger. He has golden handcuffs. Sure, they could let him go, but it would cost more than they're paying him now to pay out his shares. And if they invest that while he's here, it's supposed to be cost saved down the line. Shannon from finance knows it, and Bob knows that she knows it. But no one says it out loud, because it makes everyone look bad. The company doesn't have to do well. The price would have to be fixed at what the old place was bought for. Bob is essentially alone there floating by, keeping him around. He just has to exist, and they just have to let him. And Bob? He's diabetic and has three kids, two in college. He needs insurance. That's high on his priorities list. Accolades? The bottom. He rose to the level of his incompetence a long time ago, and his level of engagement is lower than the guys in QA. Which is where it gets really interesting. On the one hand, it looks like he's swamped and spread too thin when he takes on everyone's projects, but he's essentially a black hole. Once Bob takes it, it's nobody's problem. Bob isn't garbage. He's the garbage man. That's become his core competency, and as it turns out, it's an enormous asset to his team. Now, I don't know how much of all the, all the others realize that, and I think Bob isn't exactly eager to advertise, because it rocks the whole boat, and because he likes being able to help who he can. Greg? Married to his wife's niece. But whether they know it or not, it works out that way, and the whole team has to use him as air cover just to manage up. They just don't have the bandwidth. If Bob misses a deadline, it's whatever. The others? You remember what happened to Brian? That's why Pete was angry with Susan for dumping him. Sure, Bob doesn't get things done on time. That's the safe out. But you don't run up that flagpole in front of Kathy. She manages HR, and she's constantly rubbing elbows with the board. And you certainly don't make it sound like he's bringing your team down. 
He wants Bob buried in their department, not somewhere else cut off from this structure even further in some forgotten office. Sure, Pete gave Susan the assignment, but it was further up the chain that fired her. That's exactly how it works. If Bob had, if Bob had it, nobody remembers this. Of course, that's all conjecture. I haven't really heard anything, and I suppose you haven't either. But the point is to be careful who you disparage. But, yeah. Bob. Doesn't meet his deliverables, I know. That guy. Susan, though? I wouldn't adopt her stance on him. She wasn't aligned with the company values at all. You're darn right Bob's no Susan. We are Bob. We are Legion. Love the bob -iverse. I really need to get back into those books. The Bobs are amazing. Uh, too long didn't read for you non-Bobs out there? Engineer gets brain uploaded when he perishes so he can be revived eventually. Instead, the world basically ends and he gets installed into a ship to go look for habitable planets. He makes copies of himself that makes copies of himself, and next thing you know, the Bobs are legion, and humanity's only hope of survival. My one hipster attribute. I am forever proud of being one of the first people to discover Bobiverse. I picked it up on a whim on Audible when it had like seven reviews, devoured it in a day, and went to Taylor's website to leave a comment about how excellent it was, which I never do. That comment was number 18 on his site. I discovered Bobiverse before it was famous. Dady damn if this doesn't explain one of my previous co-workers. Though instead of it being stock options, it's that he was on our team for 10 years while everyone else had been there for 5 years or less. And when I joined, three members of the team had been there for 3 years or less. He was there so long he remembered everything about every stupid proprietary piece of software we supported and how to fix it or who to contact when it broke. He constantly had twice the number of tickets as the rest of us and was letting important stuff fall behind but he always had an answer if you had a question, and the full story as to why we did things certain ways. This would perfectly let us question assumptions if things had since changed or let us resign ourselves to continuing to do it rather than scratch our heads on how to make it work a normal way. This is me, except I also closed double the number of tickets of everyone else. I regularly get pulled into meetings with devs reviewing code because I authored requirements for a system that is now legacy. All that's missing is the Kaiser Soze moment where you realize this MF typing all of this at work is actually Bob. None of his stories are true, and he just messes off on Reddit at work all day. <laughs> The insults at the beginning were hilarious, but we got treated to a whole universe. That detail on why Bob was where he was, Bob has to be real. That person has to have described a real Bob somewhere. That detail, that person had to have known that kind of situation. Amazing. Story two. First time I went to dinner at my boyfriend's parents' house, he wanted he warned me his brother has the modesty and humility of a newly moneyed rapper he might try to suck his own tool during dinner i need to know how that dinner went honestly it would take forever to go through it i'll just add that he murmured the line about his brother just as his family was walking in knowing it would make me blush then he said i looked flustered and asked if it was too warm with mock concern I love this guy. I love this guy since he dropped newly moneyed rapper. Dude uses language the way a surgeon wields a scalpel. Honestly, it would take forever to go through it. That's fine. I don't have anything better to do. Has the modesty and humility of a newly moneyed rapper. This would have cracked me up on its own. He might try to suck his own tool during dinner. As would this. I don't know why I love this juvenile sense of humor. This is flawlessly phrased. I've never met your boyfriend, and I'm attracted to him. It's the cocky, sardonic D-bag lover in me. Guess it's just something about folks who choose Dramio usernames. Edit. I guess some folks saw the similar usernames and decided to jump to the assumption that they were the same person talking to themselves for karma, far for karma farming purposes. 
I don't know. People think weird things, man. I don't know if it was my comment that drew their attention to it or if they arrived at that independently, but I was just making a goofy observation about similar usernames having similar tastes. I don't know about similar usernames or what they're talking about, but that insult of someone's ego, a newly moneyed rapper, that's that's just chef's kiss right on. Story three. I was at a crack I was at Cracker Barrel with my redneck brother in law. I ordered an egg sandwich and it came with a tomato slice. He looks at the tomato slice. You're wearing a flannel. Yes? You're dressed normal enough. What did you do when you went to the bathroom to make them think you're queer? Edit. Bonus self deprecating insult. Same brother in law. His dad and I took him out for his twenty first birthday. He's completely sloshed, and he looks at us and freezes. You okay, we ask? What the hell? I'm supposed to be having the time of my life, and I'm here with two dudes, and no one is smashing my sister, and and one is smashing my sister, and the other is smashing my mom. <laughs> I promise he's dumber than, than anything, but really does have a way with words. Tomatoes are gay now? What do you think the T stands for in LGBT? Lettuce, gay, bacon, tomato. Everyone knows this. Reminds me of when my brother and I stopped by our dad's place and one of our stepbrothers was there. My brother says, Hey man, haven't seen you in forever. We were supposed to get lunch. My stepbrother takes a second to look him up and down to clearly assess his weight and then goes, Seems like you've been all right without me. From what I've noticed... People like this can just spin words into amazing tapestries in general. I don't know if that's nature's way to compensate for all of them being uncle brothers of each other or what, but it is beautiful. I don't know if I know about that tomato signifier insult, but the one with uh, being out with two guys, one, <laughs> one smashing the sister and one smashing the mom, that one is just priceless. That one, at least... He has a bit of a sense of humor about himself and his culture. Story 4. About 10 years ago, a guy drove past me and yelled out the window, Your mustache doesn't suit you! I'm still not over it. I hope you're not a woman, because that's just devastating. I am a woman. When she was a toddler, my daughter told me she loved how soft my mustache was compared to daddy's. It's often said that kids speak the truth. I wonder if your husband is jealous of that, because that's a great power move if you ever need one. It's okay. He got extra snuggles because his belly is nice and soft and squishy. Man, your little gremlin has no chill, only roast. She has a great future ahead. Absolutely. She's six now, and it's only getting better. Last week, I made a really nice dinner, and she took a bite, then said, Yum, you cook even better than favorite restaurant, but I think their kitchen would pass a health inspection. To be fair, my kitchen was a bit of a disaster. Give that kid a drama after school. You might have a stand-up comedian on board. Story 5. At university, our lecturer was speed writing on the blackboard. A student yawns loudly. Without turning or missing a beat writing on the board, the lecturer says, Can someone throw that dog a bone, please? Sorry for the late response. Basically, the student was ticked off about the lecturer just riding non-stop at lightning speed with his back to the students, who he hence viewed with contempt. Hence, loud yawn meant as comment slash protest to the lecturer. The lecturer, on the other hand, saw the gesture as a rude and unwarranted distraction to his fantastic lecture, and hence sarcastically asked for someone to throw the dog, i.e. impertinent student, a bone, throwing the insult right back at the guy who insulted him. I believe it's because when dogs get bored, they would sit down and yawn loudly. Giving the dog a bone will typically thrill a dog and make them attentive again. He's calling him a bored dog. Story 6. When I was in high school, there was a student that was upset about the grade he received on a project. He asked the teacher why he got an F, and the teacher replied, Because we don't give out G's. Edit. Wow, thanks for the gold, stranger. I haven't looked at my phone all day because work was super busy. The teacher in question was truly a great person and was successful with dealing with at-risk students. The student neglected the project and it was evident. Mr. B did allow the student to continue working on the project to improve his grade. He made it clear that if you want to succeed, you have to work for it. Also, 
He rode a Harley Davidson to school almost every day. Wow. Damn, that's cutting. That's absolutely brilliant. Reminds me when they asked Antoine Walker why he shot so many threes, and he said, Because there ain't no fours. That teacher must have a very secure position. I could imagine another school where if a teacher said that, the parents would call this, would try to get this teacher canceled and fired for being so insensitive to our students' needs. <laughs> it's a good insult, though. Story 7. I did not attend his funeral, but I sent a nice letter saying I approved of it. Mark Twain. Mark Twain once said about Jane Austen, It seems a great pity that they allowed her to pass away of a natural death. Oh, what? Why did he hate her so much? I was going to make a joke about him getting rejected, but I looked it up, and she'd been gone for 18 years by the time he was born, so what the hell? I've got some beef with Hemingway, but I'm not actively wishing he'd had a worse passing. Then again, he was already pretty gruesome. Well, Hemingway never seemed to mind the banality of a normal life, and I find it gets harder every time. So he aimed a shotgun into the blue, placed his face between the two, and sighed, Here's to life. Please like and subscribe if you've made it this far. I hope you'll enjoy the rest of the video and have a wonderful day. Story 8 There was a dude who went to be a prep cook in the restaurant I work at. Him and a waitress get into an argument, and he says, your adult toy must turn flaccid when you use it. He was fired the next day and me and a cook were yelled at by our boss for laughing. Worked in restaurants for about four years. There had been an attempted kidnapping in our city and we were talking about it in the back of house as we were all doing side work. I'd mentioned offhandedly how terrifying that must have been and one of the cooks turned and said, If you ever get kidnapped, just start talking and they'll return you. Back of house banter is unmatched. Anyways. I dated that guy for five years. I love this. My first prep cook job, I cut myself so often that more of my fingers than not would be sporting those little finger cots, colloquially finger condoms, and my first station started calling me finger bang. Anyways, we've been married for eight years. Story 9. Told my soldier, Private, those aren't acne scars on your face. Those are battle scars of you dodging the coat hanger for nine months. Needless to say, I was counseled for that statement. That's the most brutal thing I've read all week. Ouch. Of all the ones I've read so far, that was the first that made me go, Ooh, no he didn't. Exquisite burn. Oh, it was. My soldier thought he was funny insulting some other guys by their insecurities until I got him, and that shut him up. A classic give, but can't take type situation. I found those types of guys are the most annoying. Yeah, that's what this one was. To top it off, our medic told my soldier to get some aloe to soothe his burn. That one made me laugh. Story 10. I was out with a few friends of mine from work along with a few other co-workers that we were somewhat friendly with, but didn't normally mingle. One of my friends, Ron, was normally the quiet but definitely smart and cool. One from the other group was named Nora, and she was typically loud and aggressive, but overall pretty harmless. She also had a terrible acne problem that we were all mature enough to ignore. At one point in our drunken conversation, it got a little escalated, and Nora asked her friend, Should I moon them? Ron instantly responded by saying, No thanks, we've already seen your face. Dead silence for about two whole seconds before everyone but Nora nearly perished from shocked laughter. That was close to 15 years ago, and to this day, still one of the most vicious burns I've ever heard. Ron was slash is a sharp guy, but that was unexpected. Nora's face said it all. Story 11. Rep had made some pretty bad calls that favored the other team. One of my teammates skates over to the ref. He has a beer belly, pats his stomach, and says, Aw, ref, I think you're pregnant. You've missed a few periods. The ref went ballistic and kicked him out of the game. <laughs> it took a while for both teams to stop. <laughs> this reminds me of a story my dad always tells. Small town, Iowa, baseball game. My grandfather is up to bat and his father is the ump. He strikes out on a called third strike and mutters quietly, Ump, I think you missed that one. His dad replies, I wouldn't have if I had a bat in my hands. There is a video somewhere on YouTube of an umpire ejecting the organ player when he started three blind mice after a call. Story 12. A former co-worker was getting some grief from one of our customers. 
After the customer said something particularly bad, my coworker looked him square in the face and said, Comments like this is probably why you're missing teeth. Your coworker was probably right. Hey, no need to be mean about it. They've just got their summer teeth in. Some are there, some are not. <laughs> One of my favorites that I read online was, his teeth were so bad he could bite into a curly whirly and miss all the chocolate. <laughs> Story 13. From Bob's Burgers. If she was a spice, she'd be flour. <laughs> Similarly, I heard someone use no-purpose flour as an insult, and for some reason that just broke me. I put it elsewhere, but in the same vein, I knew a voice teacher that referred to someone as multi-talentless in a Scottish accent. Very good choice. Story 14. Have you ever considered the benefits of a frontal lobotomy? Overheard being said in a casual conversational manner by one man to another who was ranting about something, I honestly couldn't understand what. On a similar note, from the comic Pearls Before Swine, have you considered hitting yourself in the head with a shoe until your brain restarts? Story 15. I was in class, and my teacher called on a kid that clearly wasn't paying attention and did not really care for school in chemistry, and he obviously was completely wrong. I was sitting across the room, and a friend at my table said under his breath, Oh, my daddy, he could lose rock, paper, scissors to a snake. It was so out of left field, I couldn't hold in my laughter, and the teacher thought I was laughing at the other kid's answer and called me out for it. Story 16 I knew a girl that went through a divorce, and every time she picked up or returned her kids, her ex and his new wife would scream at her for some random thing. For that reason, she usually took a friend with her. So on one of these escapades, the usual starts. So she looks at the new wife and says, I know what your problem is. You're intimately frustrated. She then looks at her ex and says, But what's got you going? I thought it was rather brilliant. Story 17. Your mom had to think about other babies while breastfeeding you. <laughs> First one in this whole thread that got me. My mother never breastfed me. She told me she liked me as a friend, Rodney Dangerfield. <laughs> Story 18. What he lacked in brains, he made up for with stupidity, has always stuck with me. Thank God you've been spared the ravages of intelligence. Time bandits. Classic. I'm thinking you weren't burdened with an overabundance of schooling. Firefly. Modern classic. Similar theme. He was not cursed with self-awareness. Skyrim lore. Story 19. When someone is being belligerent because their father is some bigwig, do you know who my father is? No. Your mother didn't tell you? Knowing your mother, it could be anyone. Story 20. Heard a boss tell someone, don't overestimate your value. Deity, damn, that's brutal. If I ever heard that from a boss, I'd probably walk out due to humiliation. That's less of an insult and more of an encouragement to work exactly as much as you're paid, though. Story 21 was golfing and stopped to pee on a tree, didn't realize I was facing the direction of oncoming cart path, and this guy yells out while driving, Looks like a penis, only smaller. Story 22. I envy the people who haven't met you. I do desire we may be better strangers. Shakespeare. Story 23. It could be that the purpose of your life is to serve as a warning to others. Jolly good and so evil. Story 24. You're such a joke that your mother only gave birth to you to prove women can be funny, too. Ho, 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 ho. Also, how you have a father in your life and still turned out to be a bastard. Story 25. One of my sister's teachers would compliment someone's bovine grace if she was certain they would miss the insult. I always liked that one. Story 26. He's hard on the eyes. My cousin described my sister's new boyfriend. He's got a face made for radio. Story 27. One of my favorites is, I swear you've got two brain cells left and they're both fighting for third place. My other favorite is, he's not the dumbest person alive, but, but he better hope they don't expire. Story 28. I would agree with you, however, then we would both be wrong. Christopher Hitchens. Story 29. I was complaining about how hot it was and that I was sweaty and my colleague said, Come on, mate, you sweat getting out of bed. Still hurts. Story 30. I'll smash your father and give him a child he'll actually love. This would be useful in COD lobbies. <laughs> That's actually been used in COD lobbies. Story 31. You think in low power mode. Story 32. 
Wisdom has been chasing you, but you've always been faster. Story 33. I can only explain it to you. I can't understand it for you. Story 34. Does your butthole ever get jealous of the poop that comes out of your mouth? Story 35. You must have been a connoisseur of lead paint. Story 36. My absolute favorite is, you're a star. Immeasurably dense and best viewed from a great distance. Please leave your story in the comments. I would love to make a video on them in the future. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe.